This car's a 1967, I think, or it could even be 66, it's a very early one. Well, it was, these were built in that time, weren't they? In the time when Italy had all their problems with the unions and so on, and cutting corners cut into a corner. And they're all going to have a strike, aren't they? I really ought to have a tidy up in here one day. Bet you've never heard me say that before, have you? <laughs> I bet you'll never hear it again. Right, this one I think he can have back to go on his garage wall or something, because sometimes what's on the car isn't right or doesn't fit very well. Well, it's a Fiat Friday today, or a Dino day. So we'll have a look at this one. It's missing one of its inner wing splash guards. So I thought I'd make a nice little film and make one. But as ever, <laughs> it's never that simple, is it? I thought we'd have a look at the differences between some of the, you know, different cars. And looking at this one and comparing the ones I've got, the spare ones I've got for reference and so on, I'm noticing some differences already. Uh, differences that I wasn't aware of. So I think we'd better check that before we get too involved. So let's do that. Let's get the car up, get the wheels off, and have a look at the actual job. Okay, that's a good height to work on. So we'll start getting this wheel off and see what we've got. So being a two litre, we have rudge knockoffs on this. That doesn't mean fake rudges, that means that they knock off. You have to, you have to tap them around to undo them, these, these big hub nuts. Now, rudge were actually English, weren't they? And then bought out by Barani, which is why you have the Rudge Baranis and you have the sort of the red right hand, don't you? There's their symbol, which is also my family crest. <laughs> there we go. So if we have a look at this, we've got to work out how to undo this, which way they undo. Now, obviously, normally, when you undo things, it's anti-clockwise, isn't it? And you do them up clockwise. But what you'll see on these is they have an arrow on them. There's a little arrow here. And that is actually showing you which way to undo them, anti-clockwise. So that's the way we want to undo this. So we want to knock that in that direction. So we'll just knock this round a bit. These shouldn't be too tight because I've had these off before. There you go. So that's undoing in the conventional manner, isn't it? You see? Anti-clockwise. But yeah, so if we look at this sort of inertia idea, see, see, if, see if you imagine the weight of this is going to try and hold it still as the wheel's turning forwards, which would effectively do it back up, wouldn't it? Like that, you see? See what I mean? So to try and do it up. Whereas if you had it the other way round, and the inertia would go in the other direction, it would try and undo it, wouldn't it? So let's imagine, we'll have a look on the other side, but imagine this wheel's going that way, as if it's on the other side of the car, and the inertia's trying to undo this, isn't it? It's trying to let this one loosen itself. You see, like that. Probably not the most scientific way of describing it, but it is, it's what I'm trying. It's, it's what it is. Right. So the splash guards we're actually looking at. Now we've got some access. It covers all this area up in here, so it covers this lot up. So it should bolt onto a little bolt there and a little bolt up this end, but this one's sort of all pushed around and missing. But let's just trial fit it back up in. Now this is the one that came off this car. And it fitted up in here like this. So it's popped up in there like that. So it sort of had one screw in it there and it sort of pushed in there. And that one should line up with that one there. So something like that. Then this little piece here lines up with the end of the sill. And that's sort of what we're looking at. That's, that's it, that's really what it does and it covers all this up, sits like that, and then this other one would come round to here and join there. Now that's what it would do. 
but let's have a look at another one. It's interesting, it's got this green paint on it. So I reckon this car was that hoddy green once upon a time. But if we look at this other one I've got from stock, now this must be another two litre one. You can see it's a sort of slightly different shape. See the top edge is a different shape there. This is the same and the bottom's about the same, but here's different. So I was just gonna try this one on just to see roughly what it looks like to see if I can see what's been going on, if there's a reason for that. But as I say, this is a Series 1 car, and this, I think, has come off a Series 2. So I just thought I'd have a look and see what it looks like, really. But you see, it actually would work. This would work. This one would work on here. So I'm not sure why that's a different shape. So what I'm trying to work out is, is that factory, or has this been mucked about with? Now, this has got a different, different fitting here. This has got the staples holding this in. So this rubber here is effectively the door scraper rubber out of the top of the door, which is one of these rubbers along here on a coupe. It's a coupe one rather than a spider one, but anyway, that's what it is. Whereas this one has got this push-in style, that thing. So, but when I take that off and have a look, underneath here I can't see any staples. So I'm assuming this is, this is, this is it. This is, this is a factory one, but it being an early car, it's certainly got some age to it, look at it. But the, I think this is the way it is. And I think this is, um, this is just because it's a series one, it was slightly different than they changed them. You can see the sort of witness marks of the dirt where it's bolted on there. I mean, this one's been hacked about a bit. I reckon that is the way it was. Um, but it does look quite different to that. You know, that seal's shorter as well. And obviously that could have been cut down, but I don't think so, because I think it's where those were. So I think they're just different. So we'll have a look at the other side. All right, this is, this is an opposite, but we'll have a look at the other side and see what we can see just to get an idea, then we'll make one. Now, we could make a pair, but I'm only going to make the one just to match what's here, because it's just a, you know, we might as well keep the original one and refit it to the car. Right, let's have a look next door. Or rather, the other side of the car. So, hubs. What were we saying? So this one's got to go in that direction, hasn't it? Okay, so. There you go. Now this is the side that's missing its um, cover, so I expect we'll see some dirt up in there. But anyway, let's have a look and see what we've got. Right, so it wants to go on here. That's the tang where it used to be. This one has sort of been all pushed round again. It's where it used to be on there, on that bit. And those two tangs, there's some old holes where it used to be. Uh, you can see this, this ledge is where it's supposed to sit on. So obviously, obviously, you know, there must have been one there, there once upon a time. Um, now I don't know if we can really see much, can we, by, because obviously this is round the wrong way. What we do, let's, let's take a pattern of this, carbal pattern, and then we'll try it in the hole of the carbal pattern, see what it sits right. And whilst we're doing that, we can have a look at the differences in, in the other ones I've got. That's off our Series 1 car. That's off a Series 2 car. And then we looked at that, the differences, haven't we? Now that's different. So that's that bit. This one's off a 2.4. Now the reason you can tell it's off a 2.4 is because it has this access panel. And that access panel is showing you can put your hand in there to get to the indicator repeater light. And again, this one has the rubbing strip that we're talking about, and it has the staples. Now, the funny thing is this one's fitted on the outside of there, isn't it? Look, opposed to that one, but they've put that, that scraper, that, that, and say so that's a window scraper seal, that's what it is, off of a coupe. Um, don't think it's the same as the spider one, it might be, but anyway. Um, and you see they fitted it in a different position to that one, where that, that's all on the back, whereas that one had this rubber on the back, but that one on the front. And it's original because you've still got all the under seal and things around it and the staples, so it's not that, oh, it used to be, you know, the remains of that are there. You know, that, that's obviously the way they did it. So another little change they did and, you know, during their production. So that's that, so that's 2.4, but that is the opposite number, isn't it, to this, you see? It's the opposite number, and that's missing the bottom there. 
So I don't know if that's been hacked off or something. I think that has, because there's the opposite number to that one, and it's got more of the bottom. So that's the 2.4 one. So that's it. So that's all the 2 litre. This is 2.4. And these are some 2.4 patterns that I made when I was making them. So I made a couple of spares, you know, for various reasons, because I wanted to make a couple of extra ones whilst I was about it. So that's that. So that shows some of the differences. And what we were going to do now, we we're going to take a pattern off that, weren't we? And then try it on the other side of the car, because that's what we want to make, is the opposite number to this. So if we take a pattern from there and then try it, then we can see what we've got. Now, just to get an idea of what we're dealing with, I'll just check this with the, with the thing. So, so we're straight across the bottom there, aren't we? You know, the back of it is straight. There's a little curve in the end there, but that's probably just where they tweaked it to fit it. So there's no real curves in this. It's not, it's not sort of, you know, it's not a double curvature thing. It hasn't got that in it, has it? and that so it's not going to have to go through the english wheel or anything it's just a fairly sort of you know straight curve around there what we'll do is we'll fold it up and then we'll shrink the edge to to get it to follow that shape so yes yeah, say curve that way isn't it but not that way so fairly easy more of this green paint here this is quite a bit of green paint in various places on this which leads me to believe that car was that holly green because that is a a shade that they did use so it's been retailed red at some time hasn't it <laughs> right let's get um a bit of card for a pattern so um be useful to have this off wouldn't it to see what we're dealing with as i say it doesn't look to me like there was ever any staples under there does it i think that was uh, just the way it is and you see how, how furred up it's got how corroded but anyway I don't think there was ever anything under there. So let's try and mark out what we're dealing with. Now, we think we've got a straight edge there, haven't we? So we line that one up there like that. And then we can just draw around this, can't we? I'll put me, I'll put my holes in there. So I think those holes are something like that. Um, but definitely that one's like that. Right, okay, let's draw around this. Oops. Sharp my pencil, won't I? Now I'm just going to go with what we've got. I'm not going to start working out the folds yet. We can add on what we need for the folds in a minute. Let's just work out the actual shape of what we are dealing with to begin with. Right, that gives us our shape, doesn't it? That's what we're dealing with, isn't it? So we've got, we've got a couple of returns to think about. So we've got this one on the bottom here. So that starts, doesn't cover the whole bit, does it? So that, that goes from about there. So we take that from there. And that is 15 mil. So we can go off there. Now, because this is a sort of heat, uh, not heat shield, this is a, going back to that Maserati, and I think of the Maserati heat shields we made. Uh, because this is a, just a sort of a, sh uh, a, a weather shield or, you know, um, splash guard, you know, whatever we're going to call it, underbody shield, it's not going to need to be millimetre perfect. So, you know, we're not letting a piece into a panel, so it, it doesn't matter about sort of metal thicknesses and, and, and you know, a, a blunt old... Um, pencil and so on so so you know we're not we're not don't have to be that exact but we want to be something about right obviously so right that allowing for a metal thickness there that would be that's 10 mil if we go right back to that 12 mil right i say 12 all right okay allow that at 12 with a longer ruler. Now what we're looking at is the shape of this one, isn't it? I'm trying to work out whether that's straight or not, that line. See, but I don't think it is. I think that doesn't go, do you know what I mean? That does curl round a bit. Now it's partly where it's been knocked around a bit, but I'm wondering if that's straight anyway. So why don't we have a quick look on the car to see where it's gonna go, which will give us an idea. It's that side, let me get a torch. 
Um, let's, um, let's look where we took it off rather than where we put the new one. Look at the edge it's got to sit on to get an idea. So that, that return edge goes along this edge here, wants to sit on there. So we want to see how straight that is. So I, I mean, you know, it's obviously curls around that way, but does it curl around this way? So if we sort of put a ruler in there, we can get an idea. Well, it's pretty straight. If we go off this edge here, it's pretty straight there. It's not where it's been knocked around. So I'd think that's fairly straight, that line from there to there. Let's have another look. Yeah, and if we was to fold that back up there, that would be fairly straight from there to there, wouldn't it? Let's try it again. Yeah, there's a little bit of, is that just the end? Yeah, I think that's fairly straight. I think that's straight enough. So we'll take that as a straight line. Let's go back and have a look at that. So that bottom bit was where we found it looked a bit curved on the car. So we're, we, we can straighten this line out, I reckon. We can take that and start straightening that out a bit. And then we go down to here. Now if we're carrying that on straight there, that appeared to curl round, didn't it, on this. But is that where that's all been damaged? It does actually appear to bend round a bit, doesn't it? So we might have to replicate some of that. Difficult to say on this. Let's try on this one that's not so damaged. Give us a better idea of what it's doing. Yeah, I reckon that's pretty straight, isn't it? That's a fairly straight fold from there to there. But if we go on this bottom bit, it definitely kicks in, doesn't it? Look at that. So I think most of that is fairly straight. That goes a fairly, that's a fairly straight line from there to there. But when we get to this area, it kicks back in. So I think we've got to emulate what we found on this one. I think we're going to have to do that, aren't we? But what we'll do is we're going to add on here our, our extra, which was 12 mil, wasn't it? Let's add that on. And I think we'll add a bit, when we cut it, we'll cut it a bit long and then we can try it back to back it on the other one, can't we? So, A lot of this is about interpretation of what you've got. You don't always, um, sometimes it's as simple as that, that you just change a few things, you know, allow yourself a bit extra and then work with it. So I think this curls out around the bottom there a bit. So we go like that. Now, if I don't cut up to that line, we'll allow a bit extra. That one we can go to the line, all this can be to it. We'll allow a bit extra on here and then we'll try it on the backs of these and that'll give us another thing to work with, won't it? And we're saying about allowing a bit extra there, aren't we? So let's just cut this with a bit extra. Now we're working with that one, weren't we? That was the one we were working with, which has got this slight different angle at the top here. Yeah, I definitely think that's, um, that does kick over a bit, doesn't it? Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? It's what it appears to be like though, isn't it? Okay, let's try it on this one. Well, this is quite a different shape, isn't it? Not far off, is it? There's not much in it. It does curl around a bit at the top there. I think we're going to leave that long for the minute. And we'll try it on the car. So on the car, we've got to allow for this bit to... It's going to fold in a different direction, isn't it? We've got to fold this... this um, we've put our folds here, like that one, which will fold that way. We actually want to fold them the other way. So I'll just fold them down in the opposite direction. We'll, use, we'll fold them down and then we'll see what we got.
Now obviously this is gonna, gonna have to sort of shrink round a bit, which we can't really do, we can't shrink this. We'd have to put some slots in it or something, but it can give us something to work to, can't it? It'll give us something to work with whilst we're trying to just see what we got. Because that's what we're trying to do is see roughly whether that one's about right and we just want an opposite or if we want to use this other one as a pattern. Let's just try this up in the place where it goes and see what we got. So what we're looking at is something like that there, wasn't it? And then we're seeing where that edge fits along there, something like that. And that curls down to there. Now that was that one there, wasn't it roughly where a hole was? And then this one, what's left of that, seems to be further up here a bit. So I'm wondering if we don't make this a bit longer, the one we're making. Um, I mean, we're not going to be able to pick up on that one very easily, but we might be able to. We might be able to pull that back into where it goes, that one, and, and pick up on it and use that stud. But we're not going to if we ain't got enough metal on here. See, so we've got that one there, and it will go on there, and it'd go on this one here too, but that's all been pushed around and bent, hasn't it? Bent out of shape. Whether we can bend it back enough to use it, I don't know. Get some pliers so I can twist that round a bit. Okay. So if we're doing that, we're going off that edge there. And we're going off that edge there. Look, we're quite short there, aren't we? So I suspect that we'll use the two litre pattern I've got and not use that one next door as a pattern. I don't know if it's been cut or what's been happening there. Something's been going on. Something ain't quite right. So I don't know what it is, but we'll have a work out about that in a minute. Okay, that's why we make cardboard cutouts and try things before you make them in metal and finalize them. So, this is where we're at, aren't we? We're looking at this one and we were trying to work out what goes on with this, weren't we? And we've cut it like that now. All this sort of hacked about hole here doesn't look right, does it? And that, that one there, is that what's left of that? But it still means it's hacked across the top there at a different angle. So I don't know what to make of this. If we compare it to that one. As I said, this is, this is different, isn't it? It's miles away, isn't it? Right, so actually that end is the same. That end is the same, isn't it? This was the end that I was worrying about being too short. Um, but it's this end that's longer on this one, isn't it? Now that's telling, isn't it? That's a bit strange. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. What's going on here? Right, let's have another look on the other side of the car that this come off of and see what we're dealing with. So it looks to me like because we're flipping this side to side, I'm getting confused. So, okay, so this one again, the outside's all been pushed round up in here. It's all been pushed right up in here so you can't see that outside edge. But it has got the stud on it. There we go, there it's come back. So that's it. Right. Okay. I mean, actually, these studs are nearly always broken off, so that's quite good, isn't it? But let's see if that one would reach. It's nowhere near it, is it? Right. I wonder if this has all been mucked about with. Whereas this is longer. Right, okay, so that, that's the stud we're struggling to reach. That one we can reach quite well. This one I think he can have back to go in his garage wall or something. And we'll make a pair. We'll make a pair to match this that then I think will fit this quite nicely. Let's do that. So we'll make another cardboard pattern, or we'll add a bit onto this. We're short with our pattern, aren't we, by quite a way on this end, aren't we? We've got enough of that cardboard to make that up, haven't we? So what we'll do, we'll, we'll stick that on the top of that. There. 
Now we're saying this top was straight, weren't we? So we go straight across the top there. Something like that. Just double check these holes and where they are. Okay, well that gives a slightly better pattern, I think. This is why you do these sort of cardboard patterns and, and, and take a fair bit of time mucking around like this, you know, trying to get things about right. Because sometimes what's on the car isn't right or doesn't fit very well. And as I say, I don't really know the history of that. Now we're assuming that this, this inner wing guard is a factory part, aren't we? But they're not that difficult to make. And it doesn't have them staples in it. Which begs the question, is that a factory one, or is that just a, one that's been with the car for many, many years? You know, that could have been made 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you know. Um, this car's a 1967, I think, or it could even be 66, it's a very early one. Um, so, you know, that, 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 that doesn't necessarily have to be factory. That could be, you know, that car could have been 10 years old when this was put on. So maybe they bought a factory one and, and, and messed around. Hang on, I'm picking the wrong one up, aren't I? That's, that's me a pattern. That's the one that we're looking at. <laughs> so this is the one that, that I think is slightly wrong, which was on the car. That's one of my patterns from another car. So, yeah, so we don't know, do we? We don't know the history of this. We don't know if that was made. We don't know if that was something that was bought. You might have been able to buy one. Um, and then it was done, or it might be, it's just that they did it and someone cut them differently and modified them later on, I don't know. But I don't think that's gonna work and do what we wanna do. So we're gonna make, you know, we'll make a pair. They ain't gonna take long to make two opposed to making one, is it? And I, that's why I'm doing what we're doing. So we wanna see this on the other side of the car and see what it fits like, isn't it? Which is what we just did, which is when we sort of started working out we're a bit short. So let's go and do that. So we want to be able to pick up on that one and pick up on this one if we can. That's what we're sort of mucking around trying to do, isn't it? That's why we're going to this sort of length of, of making it, you know, making this pattern. So it'll definitely, definitely be long enough to go to that one. And it would be long enough to go to that one. So yeah, let's go with this. That's, that's it. I'm happy with that. This is what we make. We make a pair of them, but I'm just going to make one now. Right, we want a Whitney punch out for this. Um, right, I've got to change the end on it. Right, so we're going to want to put some holes in um, in this, haven't we? To make sure, and we want to make sure they're in about the right place. Um, so we marked them off of that. But what we'll do, if we, if we offer these up on the car and see if we can feel them through where they were, would be quite useful, I think. So it's that stud there. It's this one here. So we should be able to sort of fill these by putting this up in here and see what we got. That one's about right, I can fill that through there. And this one. So that was the hole, we're going to use that one there and we're going to use that one there. So if we use our Whitney punch to mark them, I think that's a good way of doing it, isn't it? And then we can double check them again, can't we, in a minute, and see what they sort of sit like. So if we go in there about like that. So it's sort of over a bit from where that factory, where we were sort of working with the factory, Mark, wasn't it? But I think it will be all right. These are wonderful, these Whitney tools, aren't they? I've got one to restore, that bench-mounted one I was on about. Perhaps we should restore that and have a look. Right, so there goes, nice little holes. Let's just check it again. Yeah, I think that'll work. I mean, it means this has got to be bent down here a lot. I think, I don't know if this trunking's a bit fat anyway. But, you know, between tweaking these around, you know, moving these around and that, I think we'll get, we'll get what we need. We, we're right, that edge is not is slightly curved, isn't it? So we, we can follow that. So, we, you know, this is a straight edge, but we can see how curved that is on there, can't we, by that? Well, that's all right, that's all right, that's all right. Okay, let's just draw around here. That gives us that. There we can do those two in the guillotine. What I like to do is I like to sort of 
leave excess metal for you know for other jobs if we can but in the same way I don't want to spend hours cutting around you know just to save a little bit of scrap metal for, for another job another day you know that that's a that can be used again some of this could be used again that can't really so it's not really relevant is it See how much easier it is to cut through than the steel you know when we're cutting steel we have to really lean on this thing but this is um so much easier to do. Right, so we've got a deburring tool here. That's just to take the burr off here. So you get a burr, you get a sharp edge. So that will just take that off. So, we, so we're not going to cut ourselves. I'm always being told I'm using these upside down. You're supposed to use them that way. I find it awkward. Bit like a double blade base, is it? Well, you're not supposed to pluck it, you're supposed to use the bow. <laughs> well, if it weren't for plucking it, we wouldn't have a lot of music, would we? We'll just take a little nip off the edges so we haven't got sharp edges when I to spike into us. And then we want to punch our holes, don't we? Now you can mark these with a centre punch in the centre and then you you know and then you line up the little little nipple on the end of it or the little pointer and do it like that but I'm not doing that. It's so much easier using aluminium than um, than steel. It goes through everything, it's just so much easier to do. Right. That's that done. So we want to sort of do something with that edge, don't we? To take the, take that tidy that up a bit. Um, we run a file around that. And then we've got this edge, we've got to you know, put a fold in, haven't we? And a fold on there. So I'll just get a file to do that with quickly. And we'll neaten that up. See that noise it's making? That's because you've got the little serrations of the snips left in there. Which is what I'm just filing out. Right, and then I'll just fit a production paper. Now, was anyone paying attention? About 15 mil, I think it was 12, wasn't it, when we measured it? If you allow for a metal thing, this is going to be 1.5 mil thick, this stuff. It is about 12. It fluctuates, so it's not straight all the way through. If we go at 15, we'll be fine. So you remember that we've got these dividers that we, we've, we um, ground down, so the ends aren't parallel, that so step down a bit, which allows us to do some back marking. So if we set these on here, use that. So look what we're doing here. We're putting them on there, aren't we? So we're putting that edge on there, which is the edge of our metal, and then we're going to where we want to mark the metal, which is at 15. And so I'm not allowing for the 1.5 mil metal thickness. I'm not going to mess around with that. It doesn't really matter for what we're doing. Not there, so it's at 15. So if we do that, and then we can back mark this at 15 mil. Like that. And one thing you've got to be careful of here is that, isn't it? So you don't want to be doing that and then hit the bench and go like that. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? <laughs> so you have to make sure it's overhanging the bench properly, otherwise you get a bit of a false negative, don't you? Or positive. We get false summing. <laughs> so we want to tip that edge up and that's a straight fold. So we can't do that in the folder because it's not straight. So we can use one of them little tipping tools I've got or we could use, the, we could run it through the jenny to break an edge. I think we'll use one of them tipping tools just to see what it looks like and then we'll do it with a hammer and dolly. So the plan is tip the edge up with one of these little tipping tools. So these are different lengths aren't they? So that's too short. That's perfect isn't it? That'd be too short and that'd be way too short. So we can use that edge, that, that'll do. So we can tip it with that one can't we? So what you do is hold that flat and you just tip it up a little bit at a time gently. So you want to sort of hold it flat on there and we can just do that. Now it will put little crinkles in it. We're not too worried about them. They can come out a bit with a hammer and dolly or you know, whatever. We'll work that bit out in a minute, won't we? So the idea is to just tip it a tiny bit at a time each time, just a little bit. You don't want to tip it too much because then you'll end up with real crinkles in it and it'll be all over the place, won't it? Now we could probably cut that. 
a different angle so that it's more of a right angle to this rather than running straight there but we'll do that in a minute we'll see what we got when we've done this bit can't we Yeah, you see it's coming up, coming up, and it's coming up evenly rather than lots of weird bits in it. If I find an off cut, I'll show you what it looks like if we do it roughly. Roughly, it's the wrong word, isn't it? With a little less care. So we go like up like that, you see? You could sort of work, but you can see you're putting a lot more divots into it. You know, it's sort of doing it, and also you're getting caught, aren't you? You see, and then you're getting bits you can't get to so easily. I mean, you can do it like this, but it's not nice, is it? It's not sort of doing it as well, is it? And it's, you're ending up with more, and we got up to the 90 degrees quicker, but you know, we, we're getting, it's more rough all the way through, isn't it? Not as nice, and you're getting lots of lines in there. So you just do it gently, a little bit at a time, work it slowly, don't rush it, and then you should be, you know, it should come out quite well. And again, we've got the same problem with this. We don't want to be hitting the bench, but you want the overhang so that when you're bending it, you're not, you're not sort of bending the whole thing like that. You're actually bending the edge that you're trying to bend. Right, nearly there, aren't we? Nearly at our 90. And it might pay to finish this with the hammer and dolly from there. Right, let's find a suitable hammer and dolly for that and we'll get that finished off. Now we're going to start with a nice clean hammer. So we're not transferring a load of dirt and muck into the job. Right. Um, now we use this this one because we're going to take more metal in one go and not put lots of dents in it. Whereas the little one we're going to move smaller. But because this is this is shaped that way, isn't it? We're concave, and that's flat. We could then end up with lots of ripples in it. But we're only going to use this for sort of bending the top over. So it'll be fine for what we're doing. And we're looking at the same idea of moving slowly and not trying to move too much at one go so that we don't end up with loads of dings and dents in it. And obviously it needs nothing like the effort you'd be using when you're working in steel. So you don't want to go whacking it and putting loads of dents in it. You know, we're trying to, trying to work it carefully and slowly. But I'm not so used to using aluminium, so I've got to relearn how to be a bit more gentle with it. But anyway, we're up, we're up and we've got our 90. It's not that sharp, not as sharp as a fold. Um, and sometimes what you can do is you can, you can hit down onto here, which will sharpen the corner up a bit. But we'll need that on a steel plate, we don't want to do it on here. We'll just do a little bit of that quickly and see if we can sharpen it up a little bit. But you tend to bend it quite a bit when you're doing it. I'll just do a little bit of it just to show roughly what we're trying to do. But it will tend to sort of buckle all this up. Right, you can see sort of the witness marks of where it's, it is, you know, working on the edge. It's pushing it tighter. And we'll just try and straighten this out a little bit. Right, that's made it a bit better. Um, I'm not going to muck around with this too much more at the minute. Uh, I could, put, I could, if I hammer this edge here a bit, I'll sharpen it up a little bit. But I'll probably use a slightly smaller hammer with that, and so I've got to be careful not to ding and dent it all up as we go. So now we want to shrink that edge. So we'll just we'll put that in the um, just in our shrinker, won't we? Next door, I think. Let's use the one with the echo jaws. 
and then we'll see what we can do. So we're, we're trying to get, we're trying to do that, aren't we? Let's go and put it in here and see what we got. I might have to move a couple of bits around so we can actually see what we're doing and get to the machine. As ever, I've got everything in the way. Right, that's my little stand. Let's shove this machine out of the way. Get that over there. Move this box of old stuff over there. I really ought to have a tidy up in here one day. Bet you've never heard me say that before, have you? <laughs> I bet you'll never hear it again. Right. So, remember what these do, these jaws? Grab the metal and push it together. So we looked at this on other films, haven't we? See how that sort of, if you come here and look in the end, you'll see uh, it will grab the metal and push it together, which will shrink it. Right, so we want to pull this in, don't we, this edge. Right, it's starting to curl up, isn't it, already? It's starting to get some curve on it. We've got a long way to go yet, haven't we? Because we're trying to match that. So we want a we lot more curve up here. This one's fairly straight there, so we've probably got enough in that. So we're going to work this area here through there next. So we're going to work just on this area. Yeah, because we want to do, yeah, so a bit more through here. I would have said somewhere about there. Ain't far off it, is it? Okay, well that's that bit. You've got to put a fold in there, haven't we? You've got to fold that bit up. And I said we might just neaten that off. So I'll put a fold in there and then we'll go next door. There you go. Right. And being Ali, this is sort of fairly easy to move, isn't it? He says. <laughs> yeah, like that. Well, that's that. Well, we can try it in the car, can't we? That edge isn't too bad. And this, this edge in here isn't too bad. But this is physically gonna have to move down here, which means we're gonna have to move that edge, isn't it? So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll bump this fold up a bit. Right, so we wanna gain a bit on the bottom here. We wanna, we wanna be able to move down that area, which means bumping this up a bit. So I think we'll... Um, I think we'll just take a guess at that. And if all else fails, I'll have to make another one, won't I? So if I chop that down there. All right, what I do need is I need the opposite, um, opposite number on the um, snips in a minute. You see why you need to use them to cut into a corner not cutting corners, cut into a corner. So these, these will cut nicely into that corner like that, won't it? So that'll give us that. Into there like that. But now we've got to refold that, haven't we? So we're gonna to need to flatten that out. Um, and we're gonna have a bit of a ridge in that. And it could be that the alley will wanna split a bit. It could be that we really need to anneal that but I'm not going to mess around with that. I haven't got time to do that. Um, but that's sort of telling, you know, we should really anneal this. I ain't got time. You know, this film stock's very expensive, isn't it, that we're using here, so we don't want to, we don't want to, you know, have to take another, do another cut, do we? Right, that's that. That should gain us a bit on the top there. And we want to take a bit of this off the bottom, don't we? So we'll just, we'll just use the snips to mark it like that. 
Now, do you remember that was longer anyway than that edge, wasn't it? So we go about there like that. That gives us a line. And we'll just nip that off to there like that. Just what the boys in the factory would have done, wouldn't it? They wouldn't have mucked about, would they? They'd have had to get on with it. Probably on, on um, piece rate, weren't they? Getting paid for making them, not for um, being at work. And then they'd all been out on strike, wouldn't they? <laughs> well, it was. These were built in that time, weren't they? In the time when Italy had all their problems with the unions and so on. And Anyway, I won't go dwell on that. Right, we can see that there. Right, there it is, so there's that stud there. That gives us that one. And now we've got to try and pick up on this inner one, which is going to be a bit more awkward. We've picked up on that one. To get to that one, I'm going to have to bend it up and twist this around a bit. But we're getting there. We're getting there. And you see the idea of what we're trying to do. Um, what might be our idea is to bolt that onto there and then use this to sort of chase this down in a bit and this edge, get it fitting a bit better. And then you see they just drilled it through here. But this edge has all been got out here. You see this has all been pulled out. So we've got issues with the car as well. And it's a, how much do I modify the car and split all the under seal, you know, and how much do I modify this? Well, we're sort of there, we're sort of there. Now these are just little M5s, but if I can get the thread cleaned up, we can then get something on there and then we can sort of pull it in a bit for that. So you can see I've taken the, the arms off the tap, um, not the tap, off the die holder, so that I can turn it. Otherwise it'd be hitting that, wouldn't it? And I should be able to do something similar with the other one on the inside here. And with these cleaned up, I should be able to get some, you know, cut little washers on there and a, and a, and a, a nice nut and do it up and you know, sort it out, wouldn't it? Right, with those threads cleaned up, we can now get these done up. And they're, they're going up all right, aren't they? So yeah, we, we do these up. Oh, that's coming up all right. So, so that edge has been got at before, hasn't it? You can see, see all these little divots in it where it's all been got at, been knocked around. Um, so we can knock this into it a bit. We can use a bit of sort of dum-dum or something in there. We've got to put the rubbers on this as well. But I think this needs to come back over here. This edge is wrong, isn't it? You can see where it's been got at. So maybe we'll, we'll just sort of press that back a bit. You see, so that closes that up and fits a lot nicer, doesn't it now? So I'm going to finesse that a bit and we'll get some under seal on it and clean it up. But that's it, isn't it? That's, that's, the, that's what we're trying to deal with, isn't it? This is what we we're trying to make. So I think that's, uh, that, that's turned out all right, isn't it? Is that all right? <laughs> is that what you're hoping for? So we've got to make one for next door, haven't we? So um, everything backwards. Everything Fred does, but backwards and in high heels, isn't it? Just like ginger. Anyway, that's it for tonight. I've had a um, busy week. And, uh, yeah, more next week, eh? Good night. Well, I made one for this side as well because I wasn't happy with it. So we've got a pair of them now. So put the seals on it. Made the staples.